And I promised myself that I wasn't going to go anywhere again. I was going to take care of my child, pray for my child, Amen. and live my life the best Amen. way I could. And that was when I began to have peace mm. of mind. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new show, Special Moms Africa, real talk on special needs parenting. My name is Tonye Falogi Ekezie, <laughs> and I'm here with two amazing special moms, Bukola Ayinde and Obafei Kemi Luther. And I'm so happy they're in the house. So, hello, ladies. Hello, Tonya. Nice to be here. Hi, Tonya. How are if you? You guys can see how fine these women are. Eh? So fine. You wonder how they look so good and still manage to do everything they do. So, our show, Special Moms Africa, is a show where we really kind of just open up and talk about what it's like raising special needs kids. The ins and the outs, the ups and the downs. Uh, we even cover things like marriage and sex and intimacy. Yes. <laughs> so firstly, let's get started. Let's get stuck in today. And we just want to share a bit of our lives with you and give you just a background of who we are, what we do and what our lives are like. Because we believe that sharing our lives can help some of you out there going through similar journeys. So first, we are going to talk to the amazing Bukola Ayunde, who is not only a special needs mom, she is also an author, a film producer, and just a person that wears a lot of hats. So Bukola, please, <laughs> let's get to know you. Thank you, Toye. Tell us a little bit about you prior to special needs. Okay, so before I had my lovely daughter, Oluwalodimi by the name, I used to work in the bank. I'm a lawyer. <laughs> and after I left the bank, shortly after I started my consulting firm, which is DPI Services. However, two in year, after I had my daughter, I had to put everything on the shelf because I was running helter skelter mm -hmm. looking for a cure. Okay, so I'm going to stop you there. What were you like as an individual? Like, you always are so smiley. Listeners out there, this lady has one of the most beautiful smiles I've ever seen. And she's just always jolly and happy. But we know that's really not the case. So I really want to know, like, who you were. Like, were you lying in the workplace? You know, did people fear you? <laughs> what, what happened? <laughs> okay, so you would say I was the ambitious type. I wanted to get to the top of my career. But, you know, in the bank, I was being moved around a lot and I ended up in the legal department, which is not my own type of... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to, you know, go to, to that part. I just remain in HR. So I would say that I've always wanted to do my own thing, run an NGO, help others, mm. inspire people. It has always been there. So that seed was always there. Exactly. So, but I didn't know in what direction to go. Mm. Until I went through my wilderness journey huh. and, you know, those things naturally just came out. Isn't it funny how some things that all of us may have thought about way, way long ago before we got married, before we have children. And it's almost like a little dream or a little hope in oneself that when you enter this special needs journey, that is what is the catalyst that brings that out. Exactly. So tell me how you met your husband and you know that whole marriage <laughs> scenario the romance oh okay so i didn't marry early you considering didn't. <laughs> considering the african you mm -hmm, know timing mm -hmm. i married in my 30s you know mm -hmm. right now it's about that age but back then mm -hmm. i mean it should be 25 the golden age mm -hmm. you know and we met in church, you know, so we kind of liked each other mm -hmm. and we became friends. He proposed and I said, yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was all the dream of, oh, living happily ever after. Mm -hmm. I never knew to, in my wildest life that I was going to have a special needs child. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you read my book, Naked and Not Ashamed, 
I lost my first pregnancy at about 34 months. Mm. Wow, know? almost full term. Exactly, exactly. So that was a whole different, um, you know, experience for me. So, and, and it was a boy. I've always wanted to have a boy. Oh. You know, I bought everything blue. The nursery was blue. You know, we had so many things that we had shipped down. I was just so excited. And, you know, and we're told, wow. you know, that we had to evacuate. It was a very sad moment. So I felt that the second child was going to be like a compensation. Mm-hmm. So we're looking forward to it. We're all prepared. Doctors were prepared. My parents, you know, my husband everyone was like full focus on me and all that. And um, there was um, the pre I was mm-hmm. sick. So I had to have an emergency CS. Okay, so can you quickly explain what preeclampsia is? So preeclampsia is when you have protein in the urine mm-hmm. for a pregnant woman, which is not supposed to be so, and it leads to high blood pressure, you know, and it could cause convulsion, you know, which is a very risky mm-hmm. experience for a pregnant woman, both for the woman and for the child. Wow. You know, so I had that. So you had quite a difficult time even leading up to Nini's exactly. birth. Because you suffered a miscarriage. Exactly. And then you had issues with her pregnancy with preeclampsia. Yeah. And <laughs> then what happened? So she weighed 1.2 kg at birth. Tiny. In fact, just think about this baby doll, you yeah. know, and think about how tiny. So she came out at 1.2 and within two days she had gone to 1 kg. Wow. So definitely she was in an incubator. However, after like a few days, the nurse brought her out of her incubator, wanted to put clothes on her. And before we could say Jack Robinson, she had gone limp. Her mm-hmm. color had changed to like gray or blue. And unfortunately, the doctor was not on his seat. He had gone to the cafeteria. I can so, see, I can see Faye just shaking <laughs> over here by me because as she's taking so it all the in. They couldn't resuscitate her. They're just hitting her back. So by the time they could get the doctor, like four minutes had passed. So she had lost oxygen for like four minutes, which, you know, had affected the brain. So within that time, you know, that was when they called it apnea. Mm. Uh, personally, I don't think that's that apnea. <laughs> you know, I think she was so, dead for four minutes. Uh, yeah, exactly and so they brought her back and you know put her straight back into the incubator after doing some tests and you know and that was it from there she went downhill until I um, mean she balanced out again and by the time she was 2.2 kg we were able to take her home okay you know I think she had spent like six weeks in the incubator so when was she actually diagnosed with cerebral palsy so when I took her home, you know, at four months, you know, babies mm-hmm, have their milestones. Mm-hmm. So she wasn't meeting some of her milestones, you know. I noticed she was smiling with one side of her face. But as a mother, that's, everything is cute about your baby. <laughs> and also it's your first child. <laughs> exactly. You know, and somehow I was reading this baby center website. Oh, oh, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I could see, <laughs> <We all have. laughs> so I could see some symptoms, but you know how you will pray. I reject mm. it. It's not my passion. <laughs> it's, not, it's not for me. So I took her to the clinic for a checkup once and the nurse said, the child's by now at four months, she should be able to hold her neck, should be able to hold her head, which she wasn't able to. She said, go mm. and ask um, the doctor, the doctor said, oh, relax, you know, um, she's, she's preterm, she's going to take her time, mm-hmm. let's just observe, you know. So four months later, I took her to my auntie's house, and my auntie said, there is obviously something wrong. Mm. Take this child for a medical test and get a diagnosis, you know. So I went back to the hospital, I insisted on running tests mm-hmm. and getting a proper diagnosis so we could start something. You know, and we did all the tests, the MRI, we did um, the blood test, we did everything. And honestly, everything came out negative. They what? Couldn't, yeah, they couldn't see anything, you know, wrong. But based on the physical mm-hmm. appearance, ex- appearance mm-hmm. and examination, you know, she was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. Then we were transferred to a neuro 
pediatrician mm-hmm, mm-hmm. who later on, you know, asked all the questions and gave a proper diagnosis and said, okay, so if on the cerebral palsy chart, if one is the least and five is the most severe, she is a five. Wow. So help our listeners understand what cerebral palsy is. Okay, so cerebral palsy is damage to the parts of the brain that affects the movement. And that has to do with the muscles. And you need your muscles for everything. To move, to eat, to cry, to breathe. So you can imagine. As in your muscles practically controls your life. Mm. So, and that is the part that is damaged, you know. And this is both voluntary and involuntary. Exactly, exactly. So we, we have different types of cerebral palsy, you know, let us go into all the <laughs> categories. Yes, yeah. Because for some children, it affects maybe just the upper limb, some it affects half of the body, some it affects the legs. Then for my own daughter, she has mixed cerebral palsy. So, you know, her four limbs are affected. Then she has what you call this involuntary movement, mm-hmm. you know, that she can't control. So I look at you here and you, and you people out there, you can hear on my face, Kemi, because she's like, <laughs> as she's listening to this. And you can really hear this testimony that Bukola is giving. It's intense. So, you know, how have you taken this journey, this experience, this motherhood that's been thrust upon you? And you sit here today and I can say that you're even higher than you were. How have you gotten here how is it possible okay so yeah so i have not always been like this Mm -hmm. when i got my daughter's diagnosis you know i was devastated i felt oh why me why did god in all the six billion people know why did this have to happen to me i mean so yeah you don't go i mean some eight ten years back you don't go to the to the church and you would see a child that mm-hmm. has a disability. Mm-hmm. You don't go to the supermarket. You don't go to schools, you know. So it's not something the only people you see readily are beggars. Mm-hmm. So you'll be wondering, why did this have to happen to me? You know, so I was at that stage. I was going, you know, different places to pray, to look for a cure, to check for a miracle. Someone, they'll say, oh, one pastor has the gift of healing, you know. You go for laying hands, fasting, prayers. You know, I was in a particular church and they said we should remove our scarf. I, I didn't want to remove my scarf because I had on braids. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually I removed my scarf and they said, oh, it was because of me that my daughter's prayer was not answered. That I had on braids. You no, know, I had oh, funny, oh, wow. funny okay. things. That's going to be actually <laughs> another episode entirely on itself later in this season, actually, because oh that's a rabbit hole that we do not have time in this episode. But... So, you went from pillar to post. Exactly. But eventually, you found your way. Yes. How did you find your way? Because I almost had an accident coming back from where I went to pray. Hmm. And at that time, I was pregnant. Hmm. My baby was there. Her caregiver was there. So, if I was going to die from that experience, there would be four people. Hmm. So, that actually reset my brain, Tony. It reset my brain big time. And I saw that and said, Buki, what exactly are you looking for? And I promised myself that I wasn't going to go anywhere again. I was going to take care of my child, pray for my child, Amen. and live my life the best Amen. way I could. And that was when I began to have peace mm. of mind. So tell us what you do now. Oh, plenty of things. <laughs> 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 so, so now, true her, when I, I had that period of my life... Mm-hmm. I lost my self-esteem yeah. and um, I felt like a failure. I didn't want to do anything. So what I did was I went for writing classes and then I joined a marketing group which pushed me out there. Mm-hmm. You know, I started learning to become more of myself back. And right now I write, you know, I've produced documentaries, I've done a film and um, I'm a life coach at therapist ah, what wow. else <laughs> where, can, where can our listeners find you where can our listeners find okay, you okay so my social media handles BTI in day I'm on Instagram Bukola in day at LinkedIn Bukola in day at Facebook you know or talk to Bukola at gmail.com wonderful so 
You guys out there, that is just a little tidbit on Bukola Ayinde, and she will be with us very much this season. So I look forward to having her back with me in the studio. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Next up is someone with mad hair. If you guys are watching it, the hair is wonderful. It's red. It's was it pink? It's orange and it's blonde. Funky look called. This is a funky mama here that we have. Obafe Kemi Luther. He's almost in tears. <laughs> I keep thinking that the tears have stopped, but no, the tears never stop. Whether it's tears of joy, whether it's uh, tears of pain. Any mother, yeah. the tears never stop. Oh, Whether it's special need or no special need. <laughs> so yes. please, my beautiful, <laughs> sensual mama, yes. tell us a little bit about you. And prior to the time being tied Your down by, by, <laughs> by marriage and children, tell us who you were. <sighs> my goodness gracious me. Um, I think listening to Bukola speak um, really made me understand even who I am today. Mm-hmm. I think prior to marriage, I was probably exactly like everyone thought the world was my oyster. I was an event decorator. Um, oh, yes. yes. I forgot about that. <laughs> yes, I was an event decorator. I owned an event decorating company, had, you know, decorated for many companies, many, you know, celebrities, different things. I'm um, doing event decorating. And then marriage came. And for me, it was a little bit different because... It was as soon as we got married. I was pregnant almost the second month I got uh, wow. married. I was pregnant with twins, lost the twins, and then went on losing children. Yes, yeah. so we lost 10 babies in all wow. at different wow. stages. Yes, 10 babies in all, two sets of twins, and it kept going on. And, you know, as I said, listening to Bukola speak was really sort of bringing up things that I had just you know, put aside. And I think that's a bit that we forget. Mm. You know, in this journey, we become extra strong. Yeah. And, you know, for me, sort of like vulnerability and sensuality is my thing. And I was even talking to um, Tony Ambukola this morning that I find that we've become very hardened. Yes. You know, by what, you know, um, we go through. Mm -hmm. Because we have to. We have to be strong for our children. We have to be strong for everybody. But what happens to the woman? Yes. You know, so... I lost myself totally. My daughter is Onye Kamara Chuku. Mm, strong name. <laughs> strong name. Uh, yes. Who knows more than God? Mm. No one. No one knows more than God. And, um, you know, it's funny hearing this because it's almost like if when I was pregnant for Kamara, I also was very ill, mm. um, you know, had bleed at about 16 weeks. You know, I was bleeding. My I had a raised placenta. My uterus had fallen on her, actually. And then, miraculously, everything just healed on its own. And then when we got into the hospital, you know, I was trying to... Because the first... She's actually my second child. So with my first child, I tried to have, you know... I had to have a, a cesarean, emergency cesarean as well. And for me, I had a chromosomal displacement they called it so my chromosome 2 and my chromosome 6 had switched places so that was what was causing a few of the you know the the, yeah the abnormalities that I was having and making me have the miscarriages so with Kamara I thought okay let me try and push first of all but then it got to a point where the doctor was like look this is ridiculous let's just go into the operating theater so you know she was born beautiful little baby girl And then the first day, she just cried and cried and cried and cried. And she had colic, you know. So the nurses would take her and they would keep her with them a lot of time. So we were in hospital for about a week um, when she was, no, four days, yeah. She was born on 22nd. We came out on Christmas Day. And I remember going home and um, with Kamara was a little bit different because she was perfect, (laughs) <laughs> like she was just perfect. She was After beautiful. Miscarriage. Yes, you know, she was beautiful. You know, we'd had our son. And it was almost one of those things that I couldn't dare. After having all those losses, I had my first child. By the time I was six months, I was pregnant again. You know, and having lost hope that we were going to have children um, again, you know. So she was just like a surprise, you know. I, and one I, I wasn't really looking forward to. And then when I found out I was a girl, I think I was even more devastated because being a woman in this country is just difficult. And I just didn't want. <laughs> 
a female <laughs> child. And I'm being very honest. You know, I just didn't want a female child to just have to go through the trials of being female in Nigeria. The trial and the trauma. Yeah, but um, this little girl came in and she's a fighter, you know. And, you know, she didn't... Um, it, some things happened that sometimes I try and think, was it lack of oxygen? Was it because she had... You know, there are different things so, that you look so at. So let me take you back. Yeah. What is her diagnosis, diagnosis okay. and when were you given that diagnosis? Okay, so Kamara's, her diagnosis that they've given her is global development delay um, with autism, ADHD and speech apraxia. As of t- four months ago, they have now added cerebral palsy. How old is she now? Kamara is 10. She'll be 11 in December. So let's break it down a little bit so our listeners can understand. Yeah. When were you given the diagnosis of autism? What is autism? Because okay. that's the well, central uh, her, diagnosis. Her central right? diagnosis is actual global development delay. Oh, please explain. Yes. So global development delay is the overall delay in development in a child. And basically it's when your motor, your speech, your everything is sort of behind your milestone age. Mm-hmm. So where a child is supposed to be, you know, she is probably like eight years behind, basically. So that's just what global development delay. The other diagnoses are code morbidities that come with global development de- delay. So she was given her diagnosis, first of all, when she was about... Um, so like the first things we noticed were she didn't raise her head up on time. She didn't crawl on time. You know, she didn't um, walk on time. Kamara started walking when she was two years old. So she'd do this little... <laughs> But the bottle shop <laughs> for a while and we were just like what is going on but as I said she was this child who was just like she would hold on to things like I'm going there and then she had this thing that she would do she would use everybody else as her form of transportation <laughs> so she would cry so that the next person would carry her just to get to, to where she wanted, to, where she to, wanted to go to you know but yeah so we went to a doctors in the UK and they said that it was global development mm-hmm. um, delay first of all and then when we got back to Nigeria that's where we now got the autism and ADHD it's, uh, really, it's really a lot to handle and there are further <laughs> things that we will discuss in mm. future episodes with you. Mm. Now, since we're introducing listeners to you guys mm-hmm. as uh, regular peeps, <laughs> where are you now? How have mm. you found yourself? What do you do? Yeah. So for me, I was also sort of like um, all different sort of hats. But honestly, I think when I was coming here, I was like, oh my God, what am I going to introduce myself as? Because I do a lot of things. But the truth is that I'm now a mother in discovery. Mm, I like that. I am. It's the honest truth because, you know, after you've broken down and it's what I help women do to also find themselves and get a handle of who they are again. Because, you know, we, our identities were solely around our children, mm-hmm. you know. And for me, it just got to a point where I just said, I can't do this. <laughs> like, I, I just remove my hands, you know, so... What I decided to do was just love Kamara, you know, just see her for who she is. So I don't, and that's why I went this morning, I was saying how I just feel sometimes like if I've, am I doing all the things I should do? But I just feel like she needs someone who will just see Kamara. For who she is. For it's not about is. abilities. Yeah. It's really just accepting who she our is. children. Yeah. Just for who they are, where they are. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. So outside of all her therapies that she does with her dad, because we're separated now, you know, I just give her a safe space to just hug, cuddle, (laughs) laugh, dance, sing. And that's what we do together. I don't actually have... I watch you women and I'm in awe. (laughs) At this moment, I don't have the headspace. (laughs) And that's just my truth right now. So, yeah. Well, I hope that listeners out there, you've just got an idea of just two ladies who are in this special needs journey and so i'm going to say a little bit about my journey before we wrap up Mm. so as i said my name is Toye Falogi Ekezie and i suppose if we say titles i'm an author content producer and a special needs advocate my second child Simone has down syndrome and down syndrome is chromosomal disorder where you have an extra chromosome on the 21st pair, the medical name is trisomy 21. And it kind of manifests in physically, in physical features like almond-shaped eyes, flat face, a bit of chubbiness, and it also in low muscle tone. There's also um, 
cognitive developmental delays and therefore um, children with Down syndrome also need therapies, physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy and a lot of love. Before the diagnosis, I was a superstar, go-getter, TV and film <laughs> producer galore. Well, you won't see me around or just behind the scenes doing the work. But I married my best friend and had a son first and then had Simone and got lost. As uh, Faye has testified, I lost who I was, forgot who I was as I was in this journey of motherhood and put everything into especially my second child, because the Down syndrome wasn't really our issue. It was the fact that we almost lost her three times from heart failure. So she was diagnosed with cardiomyopathy, um, which in layman terms ended up being heart failure and was given six months to live. But God is wonderful after open heart surgery and two and a half years of recovery. She became an Agbeiru tyrant. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's, it just testifies that Sometimes what God sends to you and what you think is the end of the world is actually the beginning. And it's really there for you to turn this, you know, ashes into beauty. So hashtag beauty for ashes. And it's sometimes understanding that you discover not only how much love that you have, but also how important it is to look out for yourself as well. And throughout this season, we'll be exploring so many topics within the Special Moms Africa journey. We'll be talking to different parents. We'll be talking to advocates. We'll be sharing more of our own journeys. We'll be giving tips where to find great resources and just generally sharing our journey with you. And I hope that you will share your journey with us. You can find me at Simone's Oasis and also at Tonye underscore F. Obafe Yikemi, where can we find you? I totally forgot. <laughs> um, so you can find me at Obafe Yikemi uh, Luther underscore Luther on Instagram and Facebook and also at Wild Fresh Cacao, which is also on Instagram. Wonderful. So, Bukola, would you like to say anything? Well... If you're a specialist mom out there, I want you to give yourself a deep, deep hug. I'm hugging myself right now. Yeah. <laughs> and I want you to know that God loves you. It doesn't matter what you've been told, what you've heard. And we all love you here. Right from this studio, we're mm-hmm. sending you love, mm-hmm. hugs, kisses. Feel it. Feel it. And we're rooting for you. Mm-hmm. So thank you, everybody, for joining us on Special Moms Africa, Real Talk on Special Needs Parenting. We will see you, we will hear you next time. For sponsorship inquiries, please contact specialmomsafrica at gmail.com.